Welcome back to the news at 10. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Linda Akibe. Linda. Hello, Ijoma. Welcome to the nation's capital. The Minister of Interior, Abdurrahman Dambazo, says the nation's academic institutions and the media must research and give out correct information to inform policies that will check illegal migration in the country. The minister says transhuman movements are motivated by several complex factors which result in equally diverse outcomes. He mentioned this at a briefing on transhuman movement in West Africa and Nigeria in particular at the ministry's headquarters in Abuja. There are challenges and uh, some of those challenges uh, came out with emphasis in Nigeria for a couple of reasons. One, Nigeria happens to be the largest population. Uh, in this part of the world. More than half of ECOWAS population is Nigeria, as you all know. Uh, secondly, we have variable terrain in terms of vegetation, uh, whereby it is easy to move from one terrain to another depending on what you are sourcing for. In this case, pastures and water. This challenge requires a lot of information. Uh, it's with this information that policies will emanate, particularly because of other factors that have made people to move from one place to another, other than looking for pastures and water. The trial of the five suspects who allegedly robbed different banks in Ofa last year continued today with the Defence Council challenging the authenticity of the statements of the suspects as tendered by the prosecuting witness. The court had commenced sitting on the case at about 9 a.m. for the continuation of hearing as one of the prosecution witnesses, Hitila Hassan, continued to give his evidence in chief and was cross-examined by the Defence Council, Matthias Emiribe. But the judge decided to cut short the trial, citing unfavorable security reports regarding the safety of everyone, including the suspects. In his evidence in chief, Police Inspector Hassan told the court that the confessional statement of the first suspect, Ayuade Akinibosu, indicted prominent politicians in the state. Hassan said he supervised the recording of the confessional statements, adding that he helped write those of the first accused, Akini Bosu, and fifth accused person, Ni Ogudiro, and he countersigned as the writer. The trial continues tomorrow. From Oyo government house, the leadership of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and the governor-elect of Oyo state visited former President Ulusegu Abasanjo at the presidential library in Abiyokuta. While the governor-elect says his visit is to seek advice from the former president, Chief Abasanjo explains that the Nigeria of today needs true and incorruptible leaders. <laughs> They want something different, and you can give them something different. You must give them something different. You must. And it doesn't take a lot to give people good governance, sincerely good governance. Baba basically, uh, uh, you know, told us that there's a lot of work ahead of us to be done, so uh, we shouldn't uh, be complacent in any way. Just focus on the on the work to be done, you know, so that the people uh, can uh, have a dividend of democracy. 
Meanwhile, the governor-elect also paid visits to the outgoing governor of Oyo State, Senator Abiola Jimobi, at the State House in, in Ibadan. The governor-elect says his reason for visiting the governor is to tap from his wealth of experience to move Oyo State to greater heights. Governor Jimobi, on his part, is advocating a new culture of civility in the political landscape of Oyo State for development to thrive. Governor Jimobi describes the visit as the pedestal for a new culture of civility among politicians. Now, the Nasarawa State PDP governorship candidate David Umbugadu has vowed to challenge the results of the 2019 governorship election in which the APC governorship candidate Abdullah Hisuli was declared winner. Mr. Umbugadu alleged that the election was characterized by rigging and other electoral malpractices. On his part, the governor-elect, Mr. Abdullah Hisuli, says he is satisfied with the conduct of the exercise. Gradually, Nasrallah State is becoming the headquarters of rigging in Nigeria. The facts are there. Everything that is happening in Kano State is what is happening in Nasrallah State. Everything that is happening in Bauchi State are the same thing that is happening in Nasrallah State. The election in Nasrallah State and the history, first time in the history that I've seen policemen arresting legitimate votes of people and saying that instead of allowing the electoral officers to impute this result, they are saying that they have arrested legitimate votes of PDP in Nasrallah State. I want to express total confidence in the judiciary. I believe that the judiciary will do justice to what has happened in Nasrallah State. We have no doubt in mind that we have won by landslide, where we are winning by over 155,000 votes to his total of just 180,000 votes. We have absolutely no doubt in mind that it was a landslide victory. We have won in 11 out of the 13 local government areas. The contender has not won in any local government area. If all that is not enough and the person wants to go to court, we wish him all the line that he wants to take. And that's all from Abuja. Back to you, Ijoma. All right, thanks a lot, Linda. Some residents of Uguta in local government area of Anambra State may soon heave a sigh of relief when the ongoing road construction is completed. Governor Willie Obiano gave this assurance when he visited the road construction site. The governor also inspected other roads in Nando, Anambra East, local government area of the state. Governor Willie Obiano on a project inspection tour at the 4.11 kilometer Ogbojone Road that leads to St. Peter's University, Achina, in Aguata, local government area of Anambra State. According to the State Commissioner for Works, the road which had been in a deplorable state will be completed soon. This road is going on well. The contractor has been fully mobilized. You can see here His Excellency saying that. And this road is 75% completed. So 75% completed. The whole drain completed, the whole earthwork completed, the remaining asphalting. And His Excellency has fully mobilized this contractor. And we hope that in less than four weeks, the 4.11 kilometers will be fully completed. There's nothing that opens up an area as a road. And uh, Onde, not many people, when you mention Onde, people normally think of Onde yeah. in Boracot. Uh, yeah, but now here and now it's opened up. Oboji is opened up. Achina is opened up. This single road has opened up this place. For Governor Biano, road construction in Anambra is not for the fun of it but for strategic disposition. This is an important road, and uh, we'll finish it uh, just like uh, the contractor said. The team moves to Unko Nando Ikem Adani Aguleri Road in Anambra East local government area, where work is also on the way. You awarded this road not quite long, and uh, the last time you came here was in December, early December. And I promised you, Your Excellency, that we are going to asphalt one kilometer. And we did it before December, before Christmas period. And today, today you 
Your Excellency, the road is 4.2 kilometers. If we take it from where we are taking the asphalt now to this culvert, we have done four kilometers. The remaining two kilometers will be finished in the next one month. Elated by the development, women in the community sing and dance to appreciate the achievement of the governor's administration, which they believe is committed to improving the quality of life of the people, both in the rural and urban areas. And staying with women, the International Women's Day, created to put a spotlight on women's rights, is also observed to celebrate their social, economic and cultural achievements. This year, the combination of Access and Diamond Banks, currently forging a merger, held the Women's Conference in Lagos to commemorate the day. Women, more and more of them contributing to the national economy in both the formal and informal sector. The International Women's Day is one set aside for them to give voice to their yearnings and celebrate their successes. In this gathering at the Joint Access and Diamond Bank International Women's Day event, hundreds of women and some men who believe in empowering them. One man who seeks to put words into action in this area is the group managing director of Access Bank. Women are breaking new grounds. They are saying no where no needs to be said. And they are basically taking the charge where they need to take the charge. And they are doing this in all fields. It's a celebration, but also a day of information sharing. The mix of equity and debt really depends on the stage of the business and the nature of the business that you're doing. You can put the farmer, the manufacturer, the trader, the caterer in the same box. We have different business conditions, we have different challenges. The W Initiative, a product designed to empower women, is several years old, but this year has the advantage of the backing of both banks. I think that there are no two banks in the country that had a stronger focus on women, both at an employee level and a customer level than Access and Diamond. So for the last 20 years almost, we've competed against each other to talk about how we can include more women in the financial system. And now by coming together, we have those shared values already. Whether you're a young professional, a woman in family, so these are women who work in office, in, in, in corporates, right, employees, or a woman in business, at Access Bank will have something to meet your financial and lifestyle needs. The W initiative empowers women with discounted loans in the areas of fashion, catering and eateries and plans to involve more of them in manufacturing and ICT among others. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Kayode Okikiolu. You first. First Bank. Thanks, Ijoma, and you're welcome to Business News. The Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bunaya Onu, has challenged energy researchers and as alternative to fossil fuel. Dr. Onu's call follows his presentation of a technical report at a consultative forum organized by the Federal Institute of Industrial Research, while also set in a timeline of second quarter 2019 for research implementation. I am convinced that you, our highly esteemed oil and gas stakeholders gathered here today, should, in partnership with the government, provide the much needed platform that will examine all existing, emerging, and innovative issues concerning methanol. It is in order to achieve this that with happiness I present this report of the technical committee to serve as a technical guide for further inputs from stakeholders towards implementing methanol fuel technology in the transportation and energy sectors in Nigeria before the end of the second quarter of this year. And the African Development Bank has announced a 25 billion US dollar fund in support over the next five years. 
for the global fight against climate change. Speaking at the One Planet Summit in France, the AFDB president, Dr. Akiumi Adishino, says the bank currently provides 34% of its overall lending portfolio to projects that aim to boost climate change action. Dr. Adishino says Africa needs indigenous models to finance climate change, such as the ongoing AFDB's Africa Financial Alliance for Climate Change. The initiative looks to pool financial resources from central banks and other sources to invest in new energy that will enable communities access electricity and cope with the impact of world environmental challenges. The FDB president says central banks own 1.2 trillion U.S. dollars worth of reserves, which could be redirected towards renewable energy financing initiatives. Moving on, the Nigerian stock market has lost a total of 1.60% of its value since 2019 started, and this is despite the compelling valuation of the local market among its peers in the frontier markets. Now, for details of today's largely negative trading day, here is Edidion Inwang. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The Nigerian equities market reversed some of the positive sentiments recorded in midweek trading at the close of trade today. The All Share Index was down 0.48%, with the headline index and equity capitalization even weaker at 31,210.79 and 11.638 trillion naira, respectively. Now, market breadth was generally lower in today's session. Volume of shares traded and the number of transactions stood at 177.63 million stocks exchanged in 2,635 deals worth over 2 billion naira. On the sectoral performance, two of the major counters closed in the red, two closed in the green, while consumer goods remained unchanged. Now looking closely at the chart, the industrial goods index was down 0.52%, while banking shed 0.37%. Shares of Zenith, Sterling Bank and FCMB were the most actively traded for the day. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Edith Young Wang. Back to you, Kaede. Thank you, Edith Young. On a global scale, European stocks pushed aside this Brexit chaos in London on Thursday, while Wall Street opens soft, nursing the blow dealt by a Boeing 737 from around the world. Now here are some figures from the world stock market for today. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Coyote Okikulu. It's now back to you, Ijeoma. You first. First bank. We head to London for around the world in fact.